Hello, it's Diane, and I'm still working on the Victorian Journals, um, some ephemera for it. I did some stamping on my coffee-dyed paper. I took these stamps that I just got. These are Inka Dinka Doo stamps with the doilies. And I stamped them with Sahara sand, so it's a light color on here. And then I used my stays on and just stamped this over it. So it would my stays on brown so that would show up. So I like the effect that gave. And I played around with these em embossed doilies that um, Denise sent me. She sent me two of the oval ones and three of the round ones. And they have embossing on them instead of holes. <coughs> so I wanted to play around with them and use them in the Victorian journals. And I wanted to do something to make the embossing stand out. I only had two of the ovals, so I'm going to play around with the square one, too. So I have three journals. So I'm going to try to remember what I did to this yesterday. And I think I started out with just rubbing some Victorian velvet on the embossed parts. But I don't think that's even going to matter because of all the other stuff I did after that. I was, I was just playing just to see what I wanted to do, and I just did more and more. So I think this part isn't even going to show, but I'm just going to try to do exactly what I did. Let me zoom in a little bit. So I have my Victorian Velvet and my um, blending brush here, and I'm just going to rub the ink on the embossed parts. And more than that, but I really wanted the embossed parts to stand out a little more. brushed it around the edges. And then I think then I think I actually sprayed some of my new distress sprays on this paper and tried to <coughs> pick up the ink that way. Um because I didn't, I wanted a kind of a gentle effect, not too harsh, but I think this looks pretty good. So I ended up spraying it with water. I think the distressed oxide stamp pads would work for this too. And I don't want to get too dark of a purple on here, so I'm just going to, this is, um, Wilted Violet. Now the bottle says shake it side to side, but I saw a video where Tim Holtz was doing a demonstration and he said, I don't have time for this. He said it doesn't hurt it to go up and down. <laughs> so he goes up and down, so I'm going to... Whoops, that's pretty dark. Oh, that lightened it up. Give it some more water so it can react. Now I have to remember that these are thin doilies. They're not gonna they're not gonna hold up to being terribly wet. And then to tone down the purple, I just added some vintage photo. This is ending up darker than the first one. And now you can't see the embossing at all, but I think it'll I think it'll show up after it's dry.
And then there's obviously more, more coverage of color on this one. So I like this one better. But then I took my um, vintage photo ink. Did I leave that on my other table? I did. And rubbed it over the embossed portions to see if that helps. does bring them out again. So obviously the embossed part shows up a lot more in this one because I put way too much color on this one. So I'm going to get my round one and try it again. I want you to see it done properly. Now you know what not to do. I'll get it wet. Maybe I'll just spray it on my paper again. It's going to soak into that paper. It's not lying on a non-porous thing. But that'll help um, keep it from being so vibrant. That's better. <clears throat> Darn, one little squirt. That's okay. still light enough. try rubbing some vintage photo on the embossed parts. Does show up more. So I like the way the oxide inks um, uh, react with the water and give it the oxidation, oxidation look. I might put this one in the journal instead of the other oval one. 
And I want to play with this one also. This one doesn't have the embossing, has the holes, so it should retain the pattern better. I'm going to add a little cracked pistachio. By the way, these are a pain to open. It's wrapped in plastic from way up here to way down here, and you can't just snip it and take it all off in one piece. It comes off in pieces. It's a pain. Tiny bit of vintage photo. So it doesn't take very long and you get all of those variations of color and the blending and the speckles. So we have that. You get a clean sheet so you can see them. Have that one. Whoop, still can't see it, can you? And this one. This one, this one's my favorite. And this one. That one's a little too dark. I'll save that for a future project that's a little grungier. So I hope you enjoyed seeing that. Just playing around, seeing what happens. It's fun to just experiment without knowing what's going to happen. And um, probably next I'll be over at the sewing machine doing some things. Whether I turn the camera on or not is unknown at this point. I'm going to finish drawing this and then finish working. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.